Good morning and welcome everybody. Uh, today I'm going to talk about NOAA strategies in advanced interventional cardiology and vascular treatment. My name is Reka Irenberger, I'm a full-time PhD student and my vision is to improve patient care in Hungary and worldwide through evidence-based innovative healthcare solutions. For this I would like to provide forward-looking scientific results, especially in the field of coronary artery and vascular treatment. In my presentation, I'm going to talk about my two ongoing projects. The first one is dealing with the optimization of the therapy for calcified coronary diseases by, the, by conducting a meta-analysis. And the second one is planned to be an RCT, comparing different homostasis methods. So my first project is investigating the effectiveness of treatment modalities for calcified coronary lesions. Calcified coronary diseases are also called end-stage coronary diseases and their prevalence is reported between 18 and 26 percent. So they are quite frequent. As you can clear clearly see, the calcification in the coronary plaque can define the adverse event rate and uh, the severely calcified cases are associated with higher mortality rates as well. Because of the resistant plaque burden, the calcified cases require additional treatment modalities, so-called plaque modification techniques or dedicated devices. And we have multiple of them, but we don't know which is the best because there is no consensus in this regard. So our aim is to examine the effectiveness of the treatment methods for the calcified cases. On this slide, you can see all of the dedicated devices which we can use to optimize the treatment for these cases. And uh, in our study, we will include the rotational terectomy along with some of the balloon-based techniques like the cutting and the scoring balloon. In our study, we are investigating the rotational terectomy combined with the workhorse devices, which are basically the plain balloon techniques, compared to the rotational terectomy combined with other dedicated devices like the above-mentioned cutting and scoring balloon. Performing this analysis, um, we would like to provide evidence for the most optimal treatment uh, for the calcified coronary cases um, by the reduction of the MACE rate, which is the composite outcome of ours, the major adverse cardiovascular event. We made the systematic search in three databases uh, with the search key you can see below. And this is my flowchart of selection. As you can see, we ended up with seven fully eligible articles and there is one more seemingly adequate article, which is translation is in progress, and we hope we can include that, as, that one as well. We are at the stage uh, of finalizing the data extraction, and our next step is to arrange a meeting with the stati statistician. Moving forward, my second, in my second project, uh, we plan to uh, examine modern and purpose-built hemostasis devices based on different methods via a multi-center prospective randomized control trial. This is a comparison of compression and non-compression based devices in the hemostasis of brachial artery. Prob probably you are familiar with that um, in interventional cardiology nowadays we standardly use the radial artery as a, an approach for the catheterization. But in some cases, which is between um, the 7 and the 12 percent, the rad radial artery isn't available for us to puncture, so we have to choose another approach like the brachial one. The hemostasis devices can be divided into compression-based and non-compression-based ones. I would like to highlight two of the non-compression-based devices which are used in our department. Um, the first one is the kitazan-based one. The kitazan is made from shells of shrimp and its mechanism of action is based on the electrical polarity difference between the positively charged seal and the negatively charged blood, forming a strong mechanical barrier. The second one is the potassium ferrate based device. The potassium ferrate is a highly reactive substance, which is when encountering water and blood, uh, it decomposes into ferric oxide and the released cationic iron activates the thrombocytes and initializes the coagulation cascade. I would like to also highlight the um, main outcome we are working with. This is the device-oriented composite endpoint, or so-called DOCHA, which is the collective name for all of these uh, adverse events. And um, uh, we can, um, in the case of uh, brachial artery, we can face these adverse events um, uh, uh, till um, 20 or uh, even 25 percent of all of the cases, and it's highly influenced by the device of choice. The problem is 
that uh, we don't know which uh, hemostasis uh, method can reduce the dosage rates because there is no guidelines um, in this issue. So clinical trials are needed to have evidence-based decision making. Our aim is to investigate the novel non-compression based devices in case of the brachial arterial approach. In our study, uh, which is planned to be a three-arm study, we will compare the novel non-compression based devices to the compression based uh, ones in case of the brachial arterial approach by the analysis of the composite endpoint uh, or the doja. Um, in, uh, we will do this in order to uh, optimize the, uh, the treatment and uh, and we will, um, we hope that we can reduce the dosage rates with this one. In our study, we will include adult patients, but we will exclude any conditions or circumstances that can significantly influence um, the results. These are the three arms of our study. Um, the primary outcome will be the aforementioned uh, composite endpoint and the secondary outcomes focus on the need for human resources as well as the uh, economy of assets. Last but not least, I would like to uh, present the uh, ongoing clinical trial of ours, which has the same structure, but in case of the radial arterial approach. Following this line of thought and uh, seeing the uh, optimal uh, results and the benefits uh, from above, uh, including 300 patients. Mm, we, we presume that a new idea with the brachial artery uh, can um, serve the patient's welfare as well. For summarizing, in my presentation, I uh, introduced the two of the ongoing uh, studies or uh, pro projects I'm working with, uh, working on uh, in order to um, improve the patient care and also help practitioners with evidence-based decision making. And um, the take-home message from this presentation is although that the uh, field of interventional cardiology is a really quickly developing one with uh, new, um, new technological and therapeutic options, uh, further research is needed for the optimization of the treatment. I'm confident that my presented and the future research can adequately serve this purpose. And thank you for your attention. With your second project, does the stage of the disease affect actually the way of treatment what you use or not? So you can do, can you do this really random in a randomized way? Um, yes. I mean the measurement. Uh, like so in the hemostasis. Uh, yeah. Yes, uh, we have this ongoing study, which is a randomized one, mm -hmm. and uh, we have um, the experience with it. So yes, mm -hmm. uh, we mm -hmm. presume that. And then, how, how do you handle the multicenter? So this is a Hungarian multicenter study, or international? Yes, or yes. Uh, our ongoing uh, trial uh, already uh, involved the uh, department from Szeged and Debrecen. So uh, the plan is to do that uh, together as well. So uh, congratulations for your presentation, and I'd just like to ask uh, that you mentioned that you have an ongoing study with the radial artery, but yes. you are uh, moving up to the brachial artery. So yes. what are the differences between those two which could not be answered by the uh, ongoing project? Okay, thank you for your question. So um, we can see that the brachial artery is a really problematic one, and uh, we don't really have standard devices for the hemostasis of it. We have a really high um, um, adverse event rate in those cases. So I think it's a really needed um, trial to see the results and find the optimal hemostasis device for that. Um, so yes, <laughs> that's the answer. Thank you. My question, I've been thinking since our last group meeting, you know, on this, your second project, obviously, and um, don't you, or will you standardize two things? Uh, and these are my questions. One is the, the thickness of the tissue above the vessel, because in a very, or a morbidly obese patient, this can be substantial, and, uh, and uh, then I don't think you can stop the bleeding in these patients, so mm -hmm. that might be an exclusion criteria, or what is your opinion on that? And the second question, will you standardize the pressure? Because last time you revealed that there will be a pressure applied even in the treatment group, uh, but uh, will you standardize that? 
Yes, so in the case uh, of these devices, we have to pressure, uh, so put pressure on the bandage as well, just for one minute or so. But by a device or just uh, by pressing on it? And you're pressing not measuring on the... it, mm -hmm. so in manual compression. Because if you're not standardizing the pressure, yeah. uh, as a reviewer, I would mm -hmm. strongly criticize that how do you know that you're not biased? Mm -hmm. uh, you're not biased and you want uh -huh. Uh, to see bleeding in the control group, but you want to prove that uh, this is better. So you ha I, I think you should give it a thought mm -hmm. okay. to standardize it. Thank okay? you for the suggestion. Then we will discuss that with my supervisor. And uh, about uh, so the the obese patient question. Yes, it's it's also um, a good thought. So thank you. We will see. Uh, what we can do, but uh, of course in the radial artery it's not it's not a such a big problem because it's a bit different. Um, well, I did have some problems in morbidly obese patients. So Sorry? <laughs> I did have some problems oh. in morbidly obese patients. So, okay, uh, yeah. until, until now we have uh, good results and uh, okay. optimal.